So you may have caught my first video on modding the original Model O. If you haven't seen that, there's really no reason to go watch it unless you just want to learn how to swap your top shells out. Lessons were learned, mistakes were made. But I've since got the process down smooth. We don't have to worry about things like melty shell or a binding scroll wheel. And even though this is geared for the Model O minus, it will still work on the original Model O or anything with a low front really. So stuff like the XM1, uh, Zowie FK or ZA series, all that stuff this is gonna work just fine for. But today specifically, we're looking at the O minus. You ready? Let's go. Today's video is brought to you by Deepcool and the Castle EX All-in-One Liquid CPU Cooler. Deepcool created anti-leak technology to make the install safe and worry-free and the cooler's high efficiency so noise is never an issue. The addressable RGB pump top is compatible with most major RGB headers or its own controller. Best yet, you can open the cover to rotate the logo to fit any install or replace it with any graphic you like or no logo at all. The Castle EX is available in 240 and 360 millimeters and does a great job of keeping your system cool and quiet. To learn more, click the link in the description below. Yo, I'm Brian P. You're watching Bad Seed Tech, and today we're taking a look at how to properly paracord mod the Model O minus. Diving right in here, you're gonna need a lighter, a jeweler screwdriver set, scissors, potentially a razor blade or exacto, and possibly a hair dryer. Not, I repeat, not a heat gun. So let's get these feet off first. You can heat them up a little bit with a hair dryer if you like. If you are going to use heat, make sure you use it sparingly. Keep it moving and keep your thumb over your sensor. You don't have to use heat here. Otherwise, you may just have a bit of adhesive to get off there. You may be able to reuse the mouse feet, but I really recommend getting a new set. And if you're planning on using the same glorious G-Skates, you don't have to pull the front feet. Only the rear feet have screws. Now, once those are off, you get the back two screws out. You just want to slide the lip of the top shell out and it should come apart. You want to be really careful here because there's little ribbon connectors that handle the RGB. If you're just swapping out the paracord, you don't really need to disconnect these. You just have to be conscious of not pulling on them. Otherwise, they just pull up at the corners and the ribbons themselves can pull right up and out. You're only going to do this if you want to do a shell swap. Next up, we're going to disconnect the existing internal connection, which was really stubborn on this mouse. Just work each side with your fingernail a little bit at a time, being really careful when you do so. So with the stock cable free, we're going to use this as a measurement template to make a couple mods to the paracord because what we're really trying to avoid here is having any of the paracord inside the mouse body. We want all loose wire in there only. Now you have an option here. You can trim the excess like 1.5 inch of paracord that you're not going to need or you can just slide it back towards the USB plug side. It's much easier to just push it back and even if it gets thicker towards the USB side, no one will ever know since only a small portion of that cable is visible on your desk anyway. The other option you have here is that you can go the traditional heat shrink route the same way you would install any other paracord or you can opt to alter the stock cord and attempt to reuse the factory stress relief. I did this successfully on the XM1 recently by destroying the stock cable, drilling out the centerpiece, depinning the paracord, feeding it through, and then reassembling everything. Came out pretty clean though. Unfortunately, removing that cable and drilling that out is not an option here. The opening on this stress relief here is so small that the only way to get the cable out is to take a razor and cut at the lower seam that won't be visible from the top of the mouse. Then you're just gonna wrap it around the new paracord and you can discard all the heat shrink that you won't be using. You might be tempted to use this extra heat shrink to tidy up some of the loose wire that's gonna be inside the mouse body. Don't do this. There's a couple places on the frame where there's support pegs and in between that and the PCB are where those wires need to go and if you put heat shrink on there it's not going to fit. The immediate downside is that you won't be able to close this back around the paracord completely so it will always be visible from the bottom. To me this is the cleanest look from the top down and the sides but that bottom is always going to be open. Probably only you'll know that but that may or may not bother you. Another potential big downside is that you have to really squeeze that square block portion back together and get it back in the mouse frame. Big disclaimer here I don't know what the long-term effects are of having that block wedged in there between those two pegs that are part of the mouse frame. There could be some risk factor involved there. Biggest way to mitigate that is to really limit the amount of paracord that's inside the block portion of the stress relief to reduce the amount of stress that that block is putting on the frame. Even with the potential risk there, this is still my favorite way to paracord this mouse because it takes all the guesswork out of the heat shrink. So the heat shrink method is safer, but it's less consistent. The trick to this is two parts. First, you want very little to none of the actual paracord inside the mouse body. So you wanna take the black heat shrink and using only the blue portion of the flame, shrink it down with just a hint of the paracord coming out the end. The second important factor is the clear heat shrink. It can't be too long and it can't be too short. When I did the 
original O, it was too long and it was just kind of mashed in there. So I experimented this time with cutting it approximately the length of the block portion of the stock stress relief. That's too short, too short and the whole heat shrink just kind of floats around in there, too long and it binds the scroll wheel. After playing with this, I figured out the best length here is between four and five millimeters. So with the clear heat shrink positioned on the very end, closest to the inside connector, you're gonna melt that again with the blue portion of the flame. Mine looks a little chewed in the footage here because it was two pieces as I was experimenting with the length. So if you did this right, you'll have loose wire inside the mouse body and a clean looking fake stress relief coming out the front of the mouse. And that's all there is to it. You just wanna reconnect the internal connector, route the cables, snap the frame back together, put your screws in, use a little bit of alcohol where your feet are gonna go and put your feet back on. If you did it right, you'll have a clean looking heat shrink coming out the front that's not gonna float or wiggle around in there and it's not gonna bind the scroll wheel. You'll never have issues with your scroll wheel ever again. It's worth noting here too that I do like these core pad aftermarket skates more than I like the G skates. One question I get asked a lot is about this yellow wire that's present on all the stock plugs but not the paracords. It's a ground wire. It's there for safety compliance and you don't really need it. On most mice it's gonna be yellow. On some mice like the XM1 it's just gonna be a thicker black wire. Just as a little bonus here because it's such a short video today. If you ever wind up with a paracord that you bought for a specific mouse and you didn't use it, you want to use it on a different mouse, assuming it's using this connector, which like 99% of mice do, it's really easy to repin this so you can use it on a different mouse. Again, this jeweler screwdriver set is clutch. You just gently pry this little plastic peg up and gently pull the wire straight out. Then you rearrange these pins in the same order as the stock cable you pulled out of the mouse and then you gently put them back in. If they don't stay, that means you pulled the plastic tab up too far and you need to gently push it back down into place. Gently, every step of the way. This makes it super easy to reuse paracords on different mice. So that's it. Hopefully this was more clear and more straightforward than the first video and not a single mouse was harmed during the making of this video. In the event you do want to do a shell swap, I will link that original video in the description. And that's it for this time. I'm Brian P. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit that sub button, and until next time, Stay up.